Hello! In the spirit of trying to post little and often, um, this is that. Uh, I was asked recently what all the different colours mean, so let's go through them all. So I'll start off with red and black, though I don't suspect uh, you really need me to tell you what they are. Um, red, VCC, 5 volts. Uh, black, ground or 0 volts, um, since I'm not actually grounded. So. Pink and purple, or the left operand and right operand buses. Um, alternatively, they can also be thought of as the high and low bytes of a 16-bit um, bus. So that's them. They are unidirectional in that they only ever are driven by registers and uh, feed data down into the ALU. Um, the white is the bidirectional data bus, and it's bidirectional because it can be driven by the ALU and then read back by the registers, um, or say by the memory, um, or some more memory. Um, so those are the three buses. Um, moving into the red, to the breadboards, we have the unbuffered data bus, which is blue. So every chip essentially is always outputting its current state. So um, we're always getting the output of XOR these two operands or OR these two operands and things like that. Um, every one of these register chips is always outputting the data that's stored. Um, so what I need to do in order to regulate what is putting data onto which bus and when is they need to be buffered or you need to use um, what a bus transceiver. So these are just buffer chips because they're uh, a single direction. They can, you know, they can only take data from one side onto the other side. Um, these ones are known as bus transceivers. Transceiver because it's uh, both transmitter receiver. That's what transmit transceiver means. Um, so they can go either way. Um, so we, in order to be able to see what's stored inside one of these chips or see what these logic gates have calculated, uh, we need to be able to um, tap into the unbuffered uh, signal. Otherwise, we would only ever be able to see the answer or any of the, these, uh, these words when they were put on the data bus using some kind of uh, bus display, which I've, you know, I've got some one that I use here. Um, so that's blue. Then we get into um, control signals, um, which are yellow and um, orange. Yellow and orange here. So yellow is active low, orange is active high. Thus, there has been a tendency in the wiring for yellow to be mostly addressing. See all these, all the the outputs of all the decoders are always yellow because they are, you know, the uh, 74, uh, 138 and 139s all have active low outputs. So we've got a 3-bit decoder here, a 3-bit decoder here, a bunch of 4-bit decoders here, and two 3-bit ones here. Um, so that tends to be um, addressing because also on these buffers, uh, bus transceivers, and any uh, register chips like these that have integrated tri-state buffers as opposed to these ones which have the reset signal instead, which is also active low. Um, the output enable signal on those is typically also active low. So you can just take the output of one of these decoders and feed it straight into the output enable on one of these uh, bus, trans uh, bus drivers. So uh, that's, uh, oh yeah, and um, orange has had a tendency to be clocks and rooted clock, um, or control words. So it, this is a three-bit uh, bus, basically. It is a control word. Um, I mean, I, I suppose it's not a bus in that it's only got one recipient. So a bus is any wire that connects to multiple points sort of thing. Um, but it means that there's been a tendency for orange to be used for clocking signals, yellow to be used for addressing oh dear, uh, addressing signals. Um, I may consider changing the colour for control words. I might 
might use brown for that or something like that. I haven't used much brown yet. Um, but that's what they are. And I think that just leaves green, which has typically just been miscellaneous connections, miscellaneous signals. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of green links in the uh, adder subtractors here. I couldn't tell you what any of those signals are because I'm not familiar enough with the circuit in my own head. And, you know, they, they don't there, there's no particular distinction, it's just I need to connect these gates up, so I'm using green for that. Um, you, and yeah, you, you'll see the similar sort of thing here, um, this is with the, uh, the older green wire that I got from a different supplier, it was a slightly different shade of green. Um, and this is, uh, you know, regulation of um, which chip here is going to receive the clock signal, so um, what's going on up here with orange wires is actually happening here with a combination of green and grey. Now I happened to use grey at the time for the uh, active high clock, uh, rooted clock signals here, um, and I, I didn't continue with that. Um, I may, I, I don't know, I'm not entirely convinced that it's a good idea to um, have any one particular signal have a whole colour to itself. Um, I would quite like to to have a nice even sort of distribution of colour, um, but eh, it's, you know, it, it is what it is, I've built it already, um, I'm not inclined to uh, take all of these wires out in order to change it, um, so who knows, I mean, it would actually be easier to change these ones to grey, um, but, you know, I couldn't possibly do that because yellow and orange are complementary, yellow and grey would not be complementary. Um, so I would actually prefer to just change these ones. Um, I say just like it's simpler. No, it's not. It, I would have to pull all of these out. Um, and yeah, there you go. Those are the colours. Um, in terms of progress uh, since the last video, I'm almost back to square one on the ALU, but I haven't implemented the logic for the carry-in signal at the moment. So. It is a basic ALU with 8-bit addition and 8-bit subtraction, um, but the subtraction is effectively one's complement um, because I'm not. I'm while I'm doing the inversion, I'm not doing the uh, the add one. So um, that's next on the list. Bye.